hi i'm kabila see the description box below to find all the details related to the pattern and the nita nota tunisian blanket cal 2022 this is the part 3 video where we are going to see how to work the borders to achieve a 12 inch square the borders are worked in the tunisian honeycomb stitch pattern which helps in controlling the curl and give you a flattened edge i have worked two modules here so here are the markers which i have used as row counters this blue marker is the end of two modules so after that i have worked six rows of tunisian knit stitch this should give me 10 inches as per our previous measurements so we have to add up on the borders to get a 12 inch square just a reminder whatever the numbers i'm mentioning here is for the light worsted yarn so if you're working in a worsted weight yarn you have to follow the numbers which is given in the brackets like the part one video this is also a very basic video to help the beginners let's start with the honeycomb stitch pattern so it's one simple stitch and one purl stitch so we are going to keep on alternating the simple stitch and the purl stitch across the row for the simple stitch insert your hook under the front vertical bar yarn over and pull up a loop and hold it on your hook now to the purl stitch with the working yarn in front of your hook insert your hook under the front vertical bar yarn over and pull up a loop and hold it on your hook so again when you're continuing to work the simple stitch make sure you're having your working yarn behind your hook otherwise it will be another purl stitch because purl stitch is nothing but working the simple stitch by having the working yarn in front of the hook i'm going to keep alternating these two stitches across the row i'm placing a stitch marker at this row which will help in counting the rows easily so that we can repeat the same number of rows on the other side of the square i'm at the end of this row so this is the edge stitch inserting a hook under the inverted v the side chain on the left edge of your work it's a regular return pass with yarn over pull through one for the edge stitch and yarn over pull through two for rest of the row so we have to continue working across until we have one loop left on our hook now for the row two of the honeycomb stitch pattern since we have started the previous row with the simple stitch this one will start with the purl stitch and then the next one will be the simple stitch then the purl stitch so it will continue like that you'll work a purl stitch on top of a simple stitch and a simple stitch on top of a purl stitch so we are not only alternating them within the row but also across the rows so at any time you're not going to work the same stitch next to each other or on top of each other while doing the purl stitch i'm very much used to do a yarn under rather than a yarn over so we can do it either ways whichever is comfortable for you the previous row and this row forms the stitch repeat for the honeycomb stitch pattern so you have to keep repeating these two rows until it's required I'll continue to work the honeycomb stitch pattern until it measures me 1 inches which is what I require for the borders. I've worked 5 rows of the honeycomb stitch pattern which measures a little more than an inch because uh, after binding off that last row it will become an inch. I'm checking the overall measurements also. It's almost 11 inch. So an inch on the other side will make it a 12 inch square since we have achieved the measurements we are going to work the bind off row turn around to continue working a row of slip stitch in such a way that uh, this mocking is put in its proper place like folding of the edges and then making a slip stitch all together now let's bind off this you can see i have worked five rows in the honeycomb pattern the bind off is also in the honeycomb pattern the first stitch of the previous row is the simple stitch so we are going to work a purl stitch on top of it instead of holding 
the loop on the hook we are closing off the loop with a slip stitch so we are not holding any loops on the hook just we are working and then we are closing off with a slip stitch so we are continuing to work the bind off row with the honeycomb pattern that is by alternating the simple stitch and the purl stitch i'll come back at the end of this row to show you how to work the other side of the square As per the figure 1 given in the pattern, we have finished the side C and then we are turning our work clockwise and then we are going to work the side D where we are going to make the slip stitches as I have mentioned before. So first we are going to make one slip stitch each on each of these honeycomb rows. So here I have worked 5 rows of honeycomb pattern so I am going to do 5 slip stitches so this varies with respect to your measurements after which you are going to follow as per the pattern so i'm going to work nine slip stitches and then comes the stitch repeat which is skip four and then do nine slip stitches the slip stitch which comes right after the skipped stitches should be worked very tightly like we did for the combined back post stitches you have to keep your edges folded and then work tightly so that it really keeps the smocking in place i'm going to continue working the stitch repeat two more times that is skip four and nine slip stitches Then towards the end it's going to be another skip 4 and work 11 slip stitches. Which brings us to the end of this side D. If you are going to add a border on this side or when you are going to stitch it together with the other squares make sure you are stitching it with the folded edge together in a way that both the folded edges are under the embossed fabric so that the smocking securely remains in its place and also you will get a very embossed look after finishing side D we are turning our work clockwise so that we can start picking up stitches from the foundation row to work the honeycomb border on the side A so I am going to pick up one stitch each on this foundation chain so we are not fastening off, we are just continuing our work. There is a tail end here which is where we started our work. So I am going to weave in as I work along by picking up the loops from the chains. For weaving in that end, we can alternatively place that yarn end once below the hook and once above the hook. So that way we can weave in that end as we work along. I'll continue to pick up the stitches across this row and then do a regular return pass which makes a foundation row for the borders. We are working on the side A so which is same as that of side C. So we are going to exactly repeat what we did for the side C which is 5 rows of honeycomb stitch pattern. Now I'm going to bind off this in the pattern. That will bring us to the end of side A. After finishing the side A, we are going to again turn our work clockwise to work the side B, which is same as the side opposite to it, which is side D. So we are going to make the slip stitches over the honeycomb rows and then continue to the pattern after which we are going to exactly repeat whatever we did on the side D which is 9 slip stitches then to the pattern repeat of skip 4 and 9 slip stitches which is going to be repeated to a total of 3 times and then towards the end it's skip 4 
and 11 slip stitches which brings us to the end of this side B and also to the end of working this square after completing this row here is our finished square where we have started with the two modules of the smocking and then the honeycomb border on this side and we turned around to work the slip stitches on this side and then again turned around to work the honeycomb border on the other side and again turned around to work the row of slip stitch on this side if your width is less than 12 inches you can again pick up the loops on the sides to make the borders on the sides too while measuring especially the width of the fabric you may not achieve a 12 inch on all the places but on the majority of the places you should have a 12 inch but on all the sides you will be able to achieve a 12 inch so that it will be easier for you to attach this square to the other squares of the blanket there are two more steps to complete weave in these ends and then wet block the square wet blocking really helps in taming these curls which gives you a nice flat finish to the square and also the texture shows very well after blocking hope these videos made it easy for you to make the sand dune square thank you for coming along take care bye bye